Hello everybody, welcome to Paul Vickery Fishing and more of it exploring the chalk stream. I've broken out in the evening, I've never been down this bit before. I'm following my nose, hoping to find a, a bit of water. So we're gonna have a, have a bit of fish, see if we can get some chub. sign for the old mill so I'm presuming that must be a mill over the river it's probably some big house very fancy and get a Oi! well we found the river and it is in a beautiful house look at this <laughs> the mill over there as well some very lucky person lives there so obviously there was no fish in there but that spot was beautiful, oh my god. <laughs> if everyone wanted a house, that would be it. And I'll bet there's a two pound roach living in that bit. So continuation from the hunting out these roach. I'm gonna revisit some old spots that I know have held, I've caught decent roach out of before and some chub just to get some fish on the bank and you know, go into all these new places and cast a line and go along. There's a lot of times you don't catch anything or catch very few, not what you want. But um, I'm gonna get back in the river, blast some maggots in. I think actually what I'm gonna do is uh, free line a little bit of bread. Because I was spent a bit of time on the wire recently and really enjoyed myself just free lining and holding the line. And also, thank you very much, Paul Waghorn. He has serviced my Abu close face reel. He says it's not one of the better ones, but I used to use this all the time, but I haven't used it for 20 odd years. So I'm gonna give it a bit of a go. And uh, yeah, I might well be cursing it later. Let's see how we get on. One thing about this spot that is a bit awkward, it's a bit of a wade upstream. But when I have been wading upstream, I've often thought I've gone past a few fish. Because it's a little bit wider, a little bit deeper. And uh, so I'm gonna fish a couple of those spots along the way. But I should make the most of being in the river because soon, you know, the nights are drawing in, it won't be long. It'll be uh, too cold to wade for more than an hour or two. But look at this, it's bloody lovely. It really is. Just for a bit of fun, I'm gonna just try a bit of floating bread. <laughs> I've never caught a chub on floating bread. And I'd like to think this is the perfect opportunity. Now, the thought though, there's a chub would have come flying up here. Oh, it's one over look at it. Dude, that one down there is really, really dark. And I wonder whether it's a carp. There was one bit of bread just gone. Yeah, here he is. He's either a massive roach. Because he's really dark for a chub. Oh, that was a splash for a bit of bread. There's definitely a few bits going. I'm sure that's a little carp. I'd like to catch him. Right, I'm just going to lower a bit of bread in on the top. Right, that went too far over. I need to be further over that side. One looked at that then. <laughs> One looked at that and turned away. Not going to be as easy as I thought. 
there's that bream right down there. It's definitely a bream, that one. I really want to catch one on the surface. I've never caught one on the surface. They know what I'm fishing for them. It's a very small spot. That looks pretty good. Right where they are, there's one coming out from under a bush for it. And he's let it go over his head. <laughs> he totally let it go over his head. That one didn't know. <laughs> it's only a little one. But he's got loads of bread down his gob. First ever chub on crust. Let's see if we can catch another one. That was quite a way down that one. did see one chub come right out and look at that, went right over his head, didn't want to know. I did see one come across the shallows then, but the light... The line tightened and it just affected how it ran down. I've been exploring all sorts of places. I've been trying to find some more big roach just because there's so much of this river to explore. And if there's one swim that's producing big roach, there must be other big roach in this river, surely somewhere. But unfortunately, this river, it's got 28 mils along 25 miles of its course, you know, and uh, there's hardly any in the first five or six miles and loads. So all these mill houses have all become private houses and really big places where there's, it's private. You just can't get to it. So it's really hard to, you know, I personally would love to explore every last inch of this bloody river. <laughs> and with the water being so clear, it's, it's very hard to, find the fish because they're tucked up so I'm gonna keep exploring and I think this could be a lifetime's work I really do oh no <laughs> oh. oh all happened there <laughs> oh dear I can see there's a pipe down there he's got my chub Quite a big chub and quite a big pike. And there's that tench down there now. <laughs> I can just see this white patch swimming up where this pike's got that chub. <laughs> it's a big chub for a little pike. That poor chub.
just watching him, it's quite fascinating. I can just see this chub sideways on. It's probably about a pound and a half, it wasn't a little chub. I don't think the pike was that big. He'll get big pretty quick with an appetite like that. <laughs> I don't think he's turned that chub round yet, he's still got it sideways on. Oh, there it goes, it's going down his cake hole. Let's hope it keeps him full. Won't bother us. I think I'm going to need to trot maggots to tempt these bigger chub. Can't even see them at the moment. Alright, so we've got a three and a half pound line straight through. And we're going to use one of the Corum stubber floats. A bit lighter line than I normally use, but only because the... Uh, that's what was on the Abu reel. And I'm going through straight through to a size 16. I think it's a B611. I left them nice B510s behind. But yeah, the little stubber floats, because it's barely a foot deep, it, it, I've having a lot of discussions about this, uh, but you need a lot of weight, or enough weight to, for the line to take off the float. Um, but I don't want a lot of shot down the line. So this seems to be the best, a really short stubby float to not get in a tangle. Loads of maggots. I don't mind giving a reasonable amount, but a pint? That's very nearly an armful. <laughs> okay, we're all set up with the maggots. Got some blue maggots today. Never very competent on blue maggots, but we're going to start off with two blue maggots. Sod it. <laughs> Why not? Right. It's not normally tiddlers in this room. There is today, and bream and carp and pike. Big roach would be nice. Yeah, don't know how I'm going to catch that bream. I found bream quite tricky to catch in this river. Don't think I've ever had one. I was wasted 20 odd minutes in the, the earlier part of this video trying to catch one. 20 minutes is probably an hour. That's a better one. Hmm. Took a little while to wake up. I think that's the bream. I think that is the bream. It is. I was thinking that's not being very chubby. Oh, it's, it's a nice bream too. Oh, don't pull the hook out. Oh. Got big old slabby body around it. Not quite sure how to play the clutch. I never like the clutch on these coach face reels. Oh yeah, look at that. I should stop picking the fish out, but... Come on. Wow, look at that. That was about that for a special fish. That is perfect. That is. <laughs> oh dear. I am flipping useless. <laughs> and I put the float in the tree. Oh, there he is. He's down there. Do you want a closer look at him? <laughs> he was bigger than I thought, actually. I thought he was only about two pounds. He was probably three pounds. But anyway, that was my first chalk stream bream. I really should net fish. Right, I've got to go and get me float. What pain.
He was really clean and tidy. I was quite impressed with him. Got a bit of broom snot on my line. Right, next fish, I'm going to use the net. Right, I've shallowed right up. I'm fishing just about nine, ten inches because I've missing a few bites. Oh, there's that chub. He's come out and gulping the load. That's him. That's the one. <laughs> Perfect. I was just saying, oh, if he comes out there, I don't want him going in there. No, no, no. Oh, you brute. No, 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 no. I've got to be careful not to push the... Uh, Ooh, bail on button. Ooh. Nice chub. Yeah. A bit might be fair, look. No, maybe he's not known to scrap land it. I'm gonna net that. Ooh, got a landing net. I can use it. Oh, he's a good chub. I not seen that, he didn't like that. I hope that two-tone pike don't take a chance again. Come here, mate. Ah, good. That was good. Yeah, just, I was laying a bit of line on the bottom, but as it shallows up there, and they tended to be on, I'd chuck it in the deep water, and then as it shallowed up, that's where they tended to be. Is it good chub? Oh, big old chub. Got a gob on that. <laughs> So when I um, when I was changing um, changing hooks, I went down to a 20 on a B510. I did find some B510s, but went down to a size 20 just because I thought a 16 was just a bit too big because they were backing off. But lovely, yeah, good stuff. Lovely, lovely. See if we can catch that F1 or whatever it is. Whilst I was untangling myself from a tree, as you do, <laughs> I happened to notice some of these, some elderberries. And uh, day of first, first chub on crust. And uh, I think we need to try an elderberry, don't we? Quite big on a B520. That chub nearly bent that hook out. Wash it on, see what happens. Never fished an elderberry before. I don't know how good they are staying on the hook. That's still on the hook, which is quite good. I don't know how fast they sink. No experience. Any of you guys had any experience with elderberry? Well, that just went all the way through the swim undisturbed, so <laughs> I think I might sack off the elderberry. Should give it a few more casts. Did come off the hook. Quite a neat little bait. Cool, they throw well. <laughs> Didn't expect them to go that far. Right, that's right in the chub's lair. There's one on an elderberry. Day of firsts. It's a good one too.
guess it's a chub. I guess that guinea thing, whatever it is. Ooh. Oh, shit. A bloody pike. Jesus Christ. I think it's a roach and a bloody pike's gone. Oh, man. That pike is way too greedy. Might be able to catch him. He didn't let go of that last one. Crazy. Uh, you greedy bastard. What happened there? This pike is getting rather upset. He's not going to let go though. I think I'm going to have him. No? It's a bunch. No, it's not. Is it a bunch? No, it's a chub. Sorry, mate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that pike is. Oh, that chub has been battered. He has. Hope he survives. I can't believe the size of the pot, the chub that these pike are having. They're only like, you know, six, seven pound, and they're that was a two pound chub. A bit of shine off my first fish on an elderberry. I'm glad it wasn't a big roach. Gone up to an 18 from a 20, that 20 was too small and uh, I'm going to continue on the elderberry. Uh, yeah, I did get that chub fairly quickly once I'd got a bit of feed in and they got sort of, oh yeah the right, new food source and probably a little less suspicious of it than the maggots. That was down there. Hopefully this oh well yeah, that pike. Ugh. What a pain. The river seems painfully slow from what it normally is today. That's a good bite on the berry. I think that pike has really spooked them. I haven't actually pike fished this swim. I should do. There's obviously some leery buggers in here. I don't know where these fish are gone. They seem to have disappeared at the moment. It's getting a bit darker. I can't see into the water as well at the moment. That bloody pike, honestly, he's a beast. They are not getting a chance to rest. I just saw a chub come out for the last lot of elderberries that I came in and then that pike came straight at him. Bastard. I do like pike but they're never going to settle all the time he's there. Or him and his mate, I think there might even be two of them. That just came off then. Here's a decent one, let's hope it doesn't get piped. I think this is a perch. It is a perch. God, there's all sorts down here. Oh, no pipes. Oh, God. This hot pipe. Right, go away. Beautiful perch. I'm really tempted to go and get my lure rod and have that naughty monkey. Yeah, look, got a bite mark on him, unfortunately. But yeah, beautiful perch. Ah. I don't 
don't know whether this is a chub or we've got a pike or what. I know it's probably going to attract the pike in a minute. No, the pike's nowhere to be seen. It's good. Watching, watching the water in front of me, waiting for jaws to come out. He's been here. Look, he's got elderberries and maggots in his mouth. It's nice to see. B528 coming out in a rush. Seeing that they were eating that elderberry, I might give a couple more a go. What do you reckon folks? Should I go and get a pike rod? I'm seriously thinking about it. Seven o'clock. Give it 15 minutes and I'll get the pike rod. Trouble is it's a 15 minute walk back to the car. One way of avoiding getting eaten, jump out of the water. That's where them bigger chub are. snap me I think that's a good sign to go and get a pike rod I'm back with a pike rod <laughs> got me a favorite salt and pepper shad I'm quite looking forward to catching this pike and also whilst I was wading back across the river I found this really cool little perch lure so I think that's a lucky omen let's see if we can catch this pesky pike It'd be really cool to catch the uh, two-tone one. I think there's two pike in here. There they are, down there. It's gonna be a typical pike. When you wanna catch him, you won't catch him. Yeah, there's a two-tone one that I've seen a couple of times this morning, or this evening. Uh, in this video up here, I saw him in the water last year. Looks a bit bigger this year. Oh, come on, Mr. Pike. Where are you? Been leery after everything I've cooked today, and now you don't want to know. Try upstream, you might have gone upstream. Right, okay. Let's use the lucky omen. Let's use the little perch lure that we found. It's destined to catch one. I want to catch a pike. I was thinking that would be a perfect ending to this video. Catching a pike. Right, this little goat, geezer a goat. We did catch a perch here earlier, so we might catch another one. Good. Got some meat. I've got perch. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> oh, good. What's the sound about perch lure? Well, that lure was destined to catch one, wasn't it? <laughs> Look at that. So, <laughs> any of you guys are watching and this is your lure and you're fishing this little chalk stream? Well, 
Brilliant. That was good. Glad I caught that. Right, let's have another go up there. Where there's one perch, there's normally two. Two little Larry fellas. <laughs> it's got a nice action, this lure. I do love a paddle tail. Right, last roll of the dice. Gonna go back to the salt and pepper. If that's not forthcoming, I'll go back onto the trying the maggots. There's the light starting to fade. Haven't seen any fish moving around for a little bit. Oh, that pot just woke up. Did you see all that? <laughs> here he is. Here he is. Oh, here he is. Oh, he's coming for it. He woke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chaos. <laughs> he's down there still. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Something woke him up from under the bushes and then he came flying out and had three or four goes at it. And <laughs> There we go, we got him, we got him, yeah, you Larry Pike, uh, got quite a big head on him, it's not that big but he's a chub killer, uh, one he's absolutely inhaled that lure, Larry, Proper teeth on him, yeah. and this pike certainly uh, added to the flavour of the video. I'm glad I caught him. <laughs> Look, I say he's not very big, but he's been eating two pound chub. Well, but it doesn't feel like he's got any in his belly. Anyway, well, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.